Yer, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you enjoy what you hear, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out. And after knocking out that Drake video a couple days ago, I still felt the urge to write a little bit more, so I do what I always do. I put on some tunes and just vibed out. Halfway through this video from this rapper I didn't recognize, I realized something. What? Holy smokes. This is the bad place. Nah, I'm just kidding, but I do feel like hip-hop has reached the pinnacle of parody. It truly feels like half the acts right now take the same improv class. Like there is no feasible explanation for the deluge of dog shit coming out of some of these acts. And I'm not monetized, so I'm going to cuss while I still can. Damn it. Anyway, the subject of my ire is New York drill rapper Lil Mabu. Now before we get started, I don't want anyone thinking I'm some hating old head just looking for a reason to complain about the white rapper. No, not at all. I rock with Marlon Kraft, a white rapper of a way higher caliber. Like a 44 mag compared to the nerf gun around Mabu's neck. It's also not his content. I'm old and peaceful now, but as we used to say, I was with the shits. No, this video is more of a commentary on the state of hip-hop with Mabu as an example. Honestly, when I saw this 21 Pilots cosplay looking dude in the thumbnail of a video, I had to click on it. And, well, I'm convinced that hip-hop has reached the point where kayfabe doesn't matter anymore. Definitely not when a private school kid can become a drill rapper in broad daylight. Like, no alias, no secret social media handle under a rap name, nothing. Just straight out here, live action role playing. Now, Mabu, born Matthew Peter DeLuca, is a 19 year old former private school kid. And I mean private, private school. At 60K a year, his high school education costs more than a total of my bachelor's and master's degree combined. His parents have a crib on the Upper East Side and a getaway spot in the Hamptons. But what I truly find annoying is I don't really care. I mean, I care, but probably not in the way you think I do. The kid can make whatever music he wants, and I will never get in the way of someone chasing a bag, even a trust fund kid. I care for the same reason that Eminem can't be number one, and Shady is just going to have to get over it. And yes, it's because they're white. But, 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 before you go calling me a racist, let me keep it a buck. I was a doofy weirdo kid in North Philly, and Eminem got me through high school. Rappers like Jay-Z and Alox didn't really speak to my life at that point. I hadn't hit the block yet, that'd be around 17, and I had no swag, drip, or riz. Uh, pick the phrase that matches your age range. Matter of fact, drop it in the comments so I can see who is here. Anyway, what I want to talk about is how styles, cultural signifiers, and of course music become more palatable when detached from ethnic minorities and used by a white person. For example, see chopstick hairpins, bamboo earrings, and fades. Mabu waves around a piece like he's carrying dirty, but he has a concealed carry permit he probably got through his pops, so he wouldn't be scared of the exact type of dudes he has in his videos. Mabu, regardless of talent, will have a leg up on black artists performing the same music. And A, that's just the way the market works, but it will put an asterisk next to whatever he accomplishes in hip-hop. Like Eminem, the GOAT, with an asterisk. Not saying this kid will ever get there, nah, there will only ever be one Eminem, but... That's a different video. Um, let me know if you want to see it. Matter of fact, I'm going to call it right now. After Mabu peaks in this genre, he's going to go, quote unquote, back to his roots. Meaning, after he's gotten all he can as far as money and fame, he'll backtrack into more moderate styles, if not straight up leave hip-hop altogether. Here's a brief list of white musicians that co-opted black styles until it wasn't profitable anymore. Miley Cyrus, Bieber, Justin Timberlake, Katy Perry tried it with that awkward foolishness. Then you have Post Malone, MGK, and here's a clip of Mabu before he tried his hand at drill. Never wanna link when we can you used to diss me, now you wanna call me a friend Had to go and run up on my bands Shout out to my brother, shout out to the fam Getting guap now, I can't stop now My point is, as a white artist, he has a far easier time crossing over and dropping his music than the Red States gave Beyonce with her Cowboy Carter album, and she's a literal icon. 
Although essentially an African-American form, rap's commercial success demonstrates a penetration into white, middle, and upper-class sectors of society. Now imagine the accessibility when a performer matches the phenotype of the same white, middle, upper-class demographic. Well, what happens is readier access to fans who otherwise wouldn't be interested, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Mabu isn't a bad artist. I mean, it's definitely not for me, but I'm not going to say it's bad because I don't like it. But it is kind of like getting soul food in Connecticut. Or pizza in Colorado. How Denver could screw up pizza when you have a population with the munchies, I will never understand. <laughs> I found another research paper because I'm a nerd. And they examined the lyrics of a few white rappers and argued that white rappers must convince their audience that they've lived the experiences they rap about if they want to make it. And while that definitely used to be the case across the board, I don't think that matters as much anymore. Which makes it easier for artists like Mabu to make it. You sprinkle in a couple of dollars, make a couple of favors to some black dudes to get party supplies, and boom, drill rapper. Mabu should be called Young Trust Fund. And with these dry snitching songs, he should probably be called Young Indictment. But again, as a white rapper from an affluent family, even if he was to get into any dirt, his people would just cover for him. And that's part of what's so frustrating. I'm not saying the hustle or street culture is black, but there's far more scrutiny involved with black folk and other ethnic minorities displaying the same behavior. And that's what I was alluding to earlier. Not only is there less scrutiny on white rappers, as a white creator, you have access to a market that otherwise wouldn't or doesn't listen to hip hop. Like I went to college with so many white Eminem fans who call it Shady the Goat, but they didn't actually listen to any other rap music. That's why Shady can't be the GOAT, and why Mabu can get a multi-million dollar YouTube views on a song that's pretty mid. They get to tap into a market that's only there for them. And that's what white rappers really have to contend with. The fact that a fraction of their growth will always be based on people that don't support their culture. Man, that's all I got.